last few weeks uh, I've talked about um, faith fourth dimension three weeks ago I mentioned about how faith is what you have more will be given and we will have abundance meaning our inner world here attracts reflects and draws more of what we have on inside this testimony we just watched is a perfect example when a person had hurt and abuse it only attracted more of that and then attracted more and more of that that's the law of faith what you have here inside you will have more of that on the outside last week we talked about David and that positivity what we mean as Christians being positive is different than what the self-help books offer where they focus more on positivity in themselves for us positivity is based on the fact that our God is good he wants only good for us and on our relationship with the Holy Spirit our faith is not in faith our faith is in God amen and this morning I want to continue talking about uh, the fourth dimension and it's going to be part three the whole Christmas relates to the message of the fourth dimension the Bible says the kingdom of God is within you everything about Christianity since Jesus came on this earth and he introduced the message of, of good news it's always inward first and outward second his kingdom is not somewhere located in the White House his kingdom is located in here when people said where is your kingdom he said it's within us when the Holy Spirit comes to live he doesn't live in your attic he doesn't live in your basement he doesn't live in the church he lives within us God's main concern is your inner world that is where he lives that's where faith lives and that world is more important to him than anything else Jesus was born in a manger you know sometimes people ask why well that's where lambs are born lambs are born in the barns they're not born in churches and Jesus was the Lamb of God he had to be born in the manger but it's interesting because the manger is few things manger it's a barn it's dark it's defiled it's dirty and it's unworthy of divine royalty and that is exactly where Christ gets born till this day he gets born inside of us in our heart and when he comes the darkness turns into light defilement becomes purity dirt becomes holiness and unworthiness gets filled with God's identity of royalty being born in us and we walk knowing who we are because we know whose we are we belong to Christ Christ wants to be born within you and it's interesting because the whole message of Christmas is also so beautifully portrayed in the fourth dimension Jesus comes to Mary and I'm sorry angel comes to Mary and he says Mary you will conceive a child and Mary says how can that be I don't know the man on the outside I have nothing and the angel says no 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 I said it that's exactly how it's going to happen God's power will come on you and as Mary receives the word she conceives the fourth dimension is when you receive you conceive somebody say I receive. I receive see when your heart is open to God's Word your world is open to God's Spirit when your mind is open to God's promise your world is open to God's anointing when your heart like Mary says Lord according to your word and her womb was completely at that moment conceived fourth dimension is that when I open myself to God's promise even if it contradicts my circumstances my life is open to God's power and Mary also teaches us that when the moment she conceived she started to have contradiction in her circumstances because being pregnant without having a relationship with the man it created a problem with her fiance Joseph coming to Joseph and she says well this man showed up and after that I am pregnant Joseph's like what is his name he said Joseph it's not what it seems like and Joseph says I want to know his name is this Joshua or is it Caleb came it's Gabriel yeah right Gabriel which Gabriel the one we went to school with or the other one that lives on down the street I mean imagine Joseph stand there and there's a contradiction always when you receive something from God on the inside the circumstances will contradict your inner world 
and like Mary you have to hold on not go to abortion clinic as to say meaning don't give up on the promise of God because the circumstances are throwing a fit hold on to the promise of God and believe that God will work out the circumstances as he did with Joseph things will realign everything will be okay and then that which you deliver will deliver you that which you feed one day will feed you that which you protect one day will rescue you amen if you have your Bible let's go together to Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 2 and 3 Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, 2 and 3. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The heaven was, the earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light and there was light. The earth God introduces to us himself with the assumption that we already know he exists. God doesn't describe to us his history. He doesn't tell us what he's been doing before that. He just goes in with the assumption we believe he exists and he right away introduces to us our earth. Between verse 1 and verse 2 a lot of theologians agree and disagree that probably the earth wasn't made to be for, without form and void and dark. The earth was made differently but something happened that caused the earth to go from verse 1 to verse 2. There's many speculations on what happened and everything and I will not go into that because that doesn't really concern right now us and what's happening with us. What's concerning is what's going on after that. When the earth was without form and void and darkness was all over the place and it's interesting in the midst of all this chaos, in the midst of all this mess, I want you to see a few things about faith and a few things about God. And the Spirit of God was hovering. This word hovering is, is another word for like incubating like, like a hen or an eagle is, is sitting on the eggs and it's, it's resting there and it's allowing its warmth and the heat to penetrate those eggs which the chickens eventually or chicks are eventually born. So this is closeness. Holy Spirit is close. He's not distant. He is very near and he's hovering over the earth. I learned the first lesson here is when I am in my worst God doesn't leave me he's actually hovering over me when I am at my worst when I am in the dark God doesn't abandon me what does that mean for my faith see faith begins where the will of God is known write this down faith begins where the will of God is known you can't have faith in God if you're not sure He is for you where you're struggling. Faith begins when you understand if I am in the dark, if my finances are going through a chaos, if my marriage is struggling, if my health is decaying, if my children are not serving God, if I'm personally confused and I am in doubts, the Spirit of God, God does not desert me when I am struggling. God is near to me. The Bible says He is close to those who call upon Him in spirit and in truth. Faith begins what I know God is for me. See, you cannot build your faith on what God can do. People can say, well, God can, you know, turn my circumstances like this. God can also make you into a monkey. But you don't build your faith walking around hoping he makes you into a superhero. God is not going to do what he can. God will always do what he said and what he wills. Your and my faith is not based on God's ability. It's based on God's will. And to know his will means to know his willingness. To know what is his heart open to. And when you know God's will, you have the audacity to believe. Even if you are in a mess. About 14 years ago, I just received my license in July, December 30th or 31st. We were going to Spokane to do a service there. And I asked my father if I can take his Dodge Chrysler a van and go fill it with gas before we would go on a trip 
and as I got into the van and I was driving in on road 68 on the Sandy Fort Boulevard uh, on the stop sign it was really cold and the roads were icy and I pressed on the brakes and the van did not obey my instructions it kept going straight and it hit straight into the Sandy Fort Boulevard there was another car and I caused a three car accident the van started spinning I got into a huge accident I freaked out the first person I called was my dad how could I call him if I just wrecked his van because of a will I knew my dad is will be disappointed with me but because I've been with him for so long I know his will that he will not kick me out he will not say why are you calling me you know what did you do you destroyed my van he didn't get angry at me and so because I knew his heart for me in the midst of making a mess he was the first person I called because faith is always based on God's will toward you when you know that you know that you know there is no hole you can fall into that God will simply say you know what climb out there on your own when you know that you deserve punishment but God still doesn't desert you you will call on him first faith always is born out of the understanding God will always pick up the phone God will never abandon a person like me even if I am worth abandoning not only my dad came on the scene but he did something that was illegal but it's a gospel what he did was the gospel he took my place if I would had been caught with an accident my license would have been suspended at the time and my premium would go through the roof so what my dad did is he said you go home police came and they said who was in an accident he says I was they raised his premium it went on his account and I went clear this is the message of the gospel some of you like I wish I would have my dad like that too I receive in Jesus name <laughs> I have the faith in my father because not because I deserve it but because I know one thing my father doesn't desert me when I deserve punishment your heavenly father doesn't leave you maybe your earthly father will not help you maybe you do not have an earthly father but I'm gonna tell you about God in heaven who first introduced to us when the earth was a chaos the spirit was very close maybe you don't feel him but he is near and he's there to help you he's there to change your darkness to change your chaos into clarity and to change it into a beautiful garden of Eden can somebody say amen in Isaiah there is a verse that is very powerful in Isaiah if you can put up the verse where God said but Zion said the Lord has forsaken me and my Lord has forgotten me and God replies he said can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb surely they may forget yet I will not forget you see I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands your walls are continuously before me when Israel said God has forsaken us and honestly God had a reason to do so because they were wicked because they were disobedient but God replies back and he says even when you're disobedient even when you mess up even when you are not good enough to yourself God says I can't forget about you I do love you and he says if a mother can forget her nursing child that's not possible but God says if it's possible I cannot forget you you're more dear to me than a nursing child to her mother and God says I have a proof this is not just baloney this is not just empty words I'm throwing out these are not empty promises God says look at my hands look at my feet look at my side I have scribes to prove I genuinely love you these are not mere words these are actions my heart is open toward you and when you are in darkness when you are without void call on me because I'm not too far from you faith starts when you know God is not against you 
it doesn't mean that he doesn't get offended he doesn't get hurt it doesn't mean that God is not angry against the things that we've done nevertheless as long as there's a breath in your nostrils he doesn't desert us if he would desert us we are hopeless we will never be able to find salvation hope and healing and if you think you're so bad and you're so messed up if you think you're so inconsistent everyone else is no better than you just some people are better at putting better images on Instagram than you and that's it but on the inside we're all the same in need of mercy in need of God's forgiveness and in need of God's grace none of us are born with some metal or some golden bones we have the same human nature within us that needs the Holy Spirit to help us and faith begins when you understand God is for you can somebody say amen I want you to write down point number two is that faith is the title deed of things hoped for faith is the title deed of things hoped for the Holy Spirit in verse 2 we see that he was close to the earth to the mess on the earth and then God said let there be light and the light came now for those of us who read the scriptures we find out that the actual sun moon and the stars came on day four so the first question comes up to us now is where did the light come from? How come the light came on day one and the sun came on day four? So the light did not come from the sun because the sun came on day four. The light came from God who lives in the light. God likes light so much he doesn't even have a night in heaven. He likes light so much he doesn't even allow shadows in heaven. And he hates darkness so much that that's all he gave to the devil as a gift. The Bible says outer darkness. I don't know. I mean, I know darkness is bad. Outer darkness is like super size and steroids darkness, like thick darkness. The Bible says that's, he hates darkness. He doesn't like anything about God is light. It's positive. It's optimistic. If you think God walks around a depressed, cranky, moody, angry, that, that, that's maybe like your parents. Maybe you on your worst day, maybe your friends are like that. That is not God. Maybe some religious person you know. God is full of light. He lives in the light and on the first day he comes, he brings the light and there was no reason for that light except him. There was no reason for the light except God and on day four we see the sun, the moon and the stars. This is a pattern that continues throughout the scriptures where God gives you something on the inside that is so real but it has no connection to your world on the outside. It's when God comes to Abraham and says you are a father. He says yes I am but you don't have children. So you're a father without children. He comes to Israel and says I give you the promised land and they're still in the wilderness. They have land yet they live in the wilderness. He comes to you and says you are righteous and you're still in your spiritual diapers but you are righteous on the inside. Why? Because faith is the substance on the inside. In Hebrews 11 verse 1 most of us know this verse where it says now faith is the substance. If you have a amplified Bible or if you have a Bible that you can read in the original Greek, you will find the word substance here is another word for hypostasis or assurance. Substance means it's not a feeling, it's actually a reality, in a reality. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. This is a beautiful explanation that faith is not hope. Hope is what you wish to have. Faith is you have it. You have substance means it's real already here of what you wish to have. Faith is not hoping something to happen. Faith is having something that already has happened here. Not on the outside but here. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. For a very long time theologians had a very hard time explaining word hypostasis. They simply used the word substance, assurance, confidence. Until um, recently they found out a remains of one city that was burned down 2,000 years ago. One lady 
she went went to a court because somebody took her to court over a piece of property and in this piece of property uh, she had papers to prove that she owned this piece of property and so she went to the court and the court ruled against her not in her favor she sent her servant with a rock with a rock box and the title deed of her properties to a higher court in Alexandria and as this servant was going he stayed a night in the hotel and the hotel caught on fire everything got destroyed and the court got dismissed she never won the case 2000 years later so some few decades ago they find out the remains of that hotel and this is the letter they find in the box of that stone I want you to see exactly what this letter says if you can be an alert in order so she writes this letter to the court in order that my lord the judge may know that my appeal is just I attach my hypostasis word hypostasis means assurance is another word you use I use for title of the car or, or the house so what God is saying faith is a title deed of what you hope for faith is a title deed of what you hope for it's a proof you have it it's a reality faith is not just wishy-washy it's not just what I want it's what I have already on the inside amen title deed I remember when uh, me and my wife purchased the land over here not close to not far from the church but nothing changed with the land when they switched the owners in a spiritual world in an invisible legal world the owner was no longer that lady but it was me but if you would drive by the land nothing was different everything was the same on the outside in the legal world the land switched owners and I received the title deed. When I received the title deed, then I was able to build in that land and take possession of that land. But until I had a title deed, I couldn't do anything with that land. Spiritually the same thing. When you receive a title deed means when what God says becomes so real to you th through His Spirit, it becomes your title deed. You don't walk around say, I hope to have that. You walk around saying, I have that already and then it manifests in your life now let me bring something as a correction hope comes from the potential promises of God in the Bible there are thousands of promises of God you get hope by picking whatever you want and that's what you get hope you don't get faith like that the Bible says faith comes from hearing and hearing of the Word of God that word Word of God is word rhema it's not what you pick it's what God picks it's what God the Spirit quickens in your heart and that becomes alive this word explains why some people walk around saying I am healed I am healed I am healed and the other person walks around say I am healed and they're actually healed there are times where I choose to believe in God's Word I choose to put hope in my heart but that is different than Holy Spirit quickening that and creating a reality within me that I am healed now both are good one is better that means it's not about memorizing God's Word it's not about filling yourself just with God's Word it's allowing the Holy Spirit to quicken God's Word inside of you otherwise God's Word is a potential for everyone it brings hope but faith comes when God's Word becomes a revelation becomes real through the power of the Holy Spirit like Dr. Young Cho likes to say the Bible is like rice it's hard and stiff but the revelation of the Bible is like cooked rice it's very good for eating the general Bible it's like rice you take it you get hope it's good but when the Holy Spirit cooks it the same verse for God so loved the world changes your world upside down the same verse by his stripes I am healed you can name it claim it blab it grab it confess it possess it until you you just know it you have it in Greek you have it in Hebrew but there's a difference when you have it in the Holy Spirit like Smith Wigglesworth said he says some like to read their Bible in Greek some like to read their Bible in Hebrew I like to read mine in the Holy Spirit Holy Spirit cooks the rice he cooks the scripture it makes it alive and what happens inside of you invisible title deed 
You walk around not hoping, having. Not hoping, having. Look, look, at, you, look at our salvation. How did it happen with our salvation? The Holy Spirit took the Word of God, made it alive and He made salvation real. You have salvation here. You don't walk around saying, I hope I am saved. You walk around saying, I am saved. You haven't seen heaven yet, you haven't seen heavenly father yet but you already know that because it's a title deed a reality inside of you. Can somebody say amen? amen. That's what happened a few years ago. Me and my wife we gave a car to a couple in our church that was struggling and we gave them a car on Sunday. We met with them for lunch and then we said we're gonna give you a car. They broke down and crying and they said thank you so much you know they lost their car at the time and it was a good gift for them. But I said we can't actually give you the car right now because when I was driving I had a few uh, rough patches on my bumpers and we needed to change the tires so we were, we're gonna fix the car and then within a month and a half we actually will give you the car fixed and done better. They walked from our house having a car yet without a car. The only thing you know what created a car inside of them you know how be they became owners of the car because I said something. It's my words that created a reality inside of their heart. They already called their parents, they called their friends, they already walked as the owners of the car though the car wasn't there. That's exactly what happens here. God creates the light from His Word and that brings the light and on day four comes the sun, the moon and the stars. Faith is when God through the Holy Spirit quickens His Word inside of you and you start to have it before you have it. Can somebody say amen? It's when you see yourself blessed before your wallet is blessed. Before your bank account is blessed. Before you actually have a job. You see yourself healed and healthy before the doctor's reports show that you're healthy and blessed. You see yourself as happy in marriage before even you get proposed to. You have it before you have it. Can somebody say amen? This is what faith is. It's having something before you actually have it and last point is faith is believing what you don't see. A reward of faith is that you see what you believe. Faith is believing what you don't see. The reward of faith is you eventually see what you believe. I think it was Saint Augustine that said that. It said this phrase. On day four came the moon, the sun, and the stars. What happened on day one because of God's Word became very real on day four. Apostle Peter tells us a very beautiful scripture in, in a verse he says, now we have this prophetic word confirmed which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns. Peter is saying, you have this word from God it's a light he says hold on to it until the whole room becomes light because the day will come into your life God is saying hold on to the promise hold on to my word that I quickened by my spirit that made you a possessor of the promise that made you a reality change your reality on the inside hold on to that why because until means they're coming a day where five six seven in the morning a day changes your circumstances completely change hold on to the light because on day four the moon the sun and the stars will come hold on to the light because your life will change as your life has changed on the inside you know this is what happened to me personally uh, also when my world on the inside was I was not didn't see myself as any significant or I had any gifts or any contribution to my community to society to the church and to other people the ability to speak or communicate or to bring a difference in other people's lives but someone came and gave a word into my inner world at first it was a small flickering light that God will use you that God has a plan for your life on the outside everything was contrary for years everything was still the same I was still struggling on the outside but as I held on to the light on the inside that this is what God says I am this is what the word that was spoken over my life through my parents and my pastors as I held on to that my outward circumstances came a moment and they started to change and the day came 
I remember when I married my wife and she started to have nightmares first few weeks of our marriage and these nightmares were so severe at times so heavy and so crazy that uh, you know she came to prayer line a few times and we've prayed and ministered and I mean I've used every uh, version of the anointing water I had my hands on on her and with her every anointing oil that I've had I mean I have good connections with good anointed things let's just say like that and everything just continued I remember when a good pastor from Ukraine prayed for her a prophet T.B. Joshua minister one of the wise men minister her I mean I was like that's that's all anointed man of God I know that they prayed for you and I'm like baby you're done if this didn't work ain't Jesus is not gonna work either now probably and prophet T.B. Joshua spoke this word toward her and he says you're free you're free you know and when you're standing in the, in the room and T.B. Joshua speaking to you you're free you're like yes I am until you get home and everything that was before that word just continued the first thought that comes to my mind is T.B. Joshua is a false prophet or the thought that we started to believe on is this is you know what he said this word hold on to it like a light of candle in a room the night you have a nightmare you wake up but you still tell yourself I am free why prophetic word confirmed until the day dawns honestly it was about a year and a half of constant nightmares but what had happened with my wife and what had happened with me is we started to develop this truth when you hold on to the light from day one and there is still no sun no moon no stars day two day three your day four is surely to come the circumstances will change circumstances are not as stubborn they're not as strong as God but God wants to develop within you a mindset an attitude of a conqueror God is far more interested in making you on inside a different person than changing your circumstances God on the inside is far more interested in taking it through the process where he breaks down negativity, breaks down the, the poverty, the sickness, the, the things on the inside. On the outside that's not the problem. It's on the inside that's the problem. And God takes us through that one, day two, day three. And when that begins to break down, then you see the sun, the moon and the stars. Uh, but hey, you had light before they came. You had light that came from God the sun and the moon and the stars now you don't worship them and it's as though you don't really need them because the light you've been having light way before this from the word from the reality of faith inside of you what are you struggling with today what are you going through with today we have prayer line next Sunday please come we're gonna pray for right now but if you've prayed every prayer if you've quoted every scripture if you've read everything that is there to read and you've had people pray for you and all of this stuff I want to throw you a challenge today could it be that God started at day one in your life but you think why do I need light if I don't have the sun why do I need this this word from God this faith I just need my my arthritis to be gone and that's it I just need the moon and the sun and the stars but God doesn't work like that you don't squeeze and manipulate God into the corner that you like God is not running errands for us it's not God coming to us and saying your will be done it's us coming to God and say God your will be done it's God starting a process has God started something inside of you that you've abandoned because day two nothing changed day three nothing changed and you decided maybe God completely forsaken you what's the point of walking with this faith maintaining the attitude of I am a victor if my circumstances aren't changing my marriage isn't changing my health my relationships people aren't changing in the way they are toward me what's the point you don't want to abandon because day four will come day four will come to end this with is that God did not make everything in one day you can destroy your whole life in one day you cannot rebuild it in one day it's a, it's a revelation right there you can destroy your whole completely everything in your life in one day just like you can burn your house in three hours you can never build your house in three hours you may say but God can do anything yes he did not 
rebuild the whole earth in one day which means he will not rebuild your whole life that took 20 to 15 years to bring it to a state it is in one service in one sermon or in one week give God a slack we gave devil 20 years to mess us up we come to God put him on the clock of 20 minutes if you don't do something in 20 minutes I quit come on give him a break if he didn't do it with the earth he's not gonna do it with your life that means be patient it's gonna be okay it's gonna be a process another thing that I learned toward the end of this is God each day ended with saying not man there is so much more to do man when are the trees will show up when is those lakes will show up I want to see some crocodiles I want to see some some gorillas God ended each day though so much work still yet to be done he said this it is good the light came no moon no sun no stars no humans no garden of Eden nothing if you and I would look at that you said it's a mess it's not good but God is so positive he looks at the mess but sees one right thing and he said it is good can you look at what God is doing in your family find one thing this Christmas and say it is good or are you gonna look at 99 things that are wrong and keep calling what they are wrong you will destroy your faith by obsessing with what is wrong instead of what is right you will destroy your inner reality by looking at what God hasn't done instead of looking at what he has done if he delivered you from depression but you still have sickness thank him for deliverance from depression as you're waiting for deliverance from the sickness if he brought your family your whole family can sit during Christmas together thank him that you can do that even if maybe still certain financial troubles are lingering around the table why because there will be day two for that day three for that day four for that day five for that day six for that and day seven for something else God will continue to work for those who are grateful for every step he does in their life instead of complaining and grumbling for what's still yet to be done. When you come to our church and you've noticed things that are still yet to be done, when you realize you came to our church and it's still we are on day two, still a lot of work to be done, well we thank God that the lights are on. We thank God that the worship team sings. We thank God the cameras are rolling. We thank God that 220 people gave their life to Jesus this year. We thank God that 52 people got baptized this year. We thank God that, you know, we've seen home groups that are open this year. That's so little because there will be days we're going to see 50 people baptized in one service. There will be days we'll see 200 people give their life to Jesus in one service. But today we celebrate what God is doing instead of remembering what hasn't been done. Can somebody say amen? Build your faith by focusing on what God is doing. Build your faith. You always have something to thank God for. And you will always have something to complain about. You can be pitiful or powerful, but you can be both at the same time. Let's choose to be powerful with the power of our grace in Jesus' name.